Hey guys, in this video I'll be talking about how to write a personal statement for medical school. So as far as the actual prompt for the personal statement, the AAMC doesn't give you much to work with. It's simply, why do you want to go to medical school? And if you click a little bit further in the application, you can see that it gives you a little bit of hints, um, and I'll put those up here, but it doesn't really give you a ton of guidance on how exactly you should lay it out. It gives you the freedom to express yourself in the way you would like. So as you're coming up with ideas for this essay, you really need to figure out why it is that you want to be a doctor. I'm convinced that the good majority of medical school applicants actually have a really good reason and a strong motivation to pursue medicine, they just need to learn how to express it. And the point of this essay from the medical school perspective is to get rid of the people who have that ulterior motivation to become a doctor, like money. And they're also trying to see whether you have the admirable personality traits they want, and those would be things like humility and servant-heartedness and empathy and maturity. One other thing they're looking for is the fact that you've considered the downsides of medicine. So you need to be able to show them that you have seen and somewhat experienced the downsides of being a doctor and you still want to do it despite your knowledge of those things. If as I'm talking about these things you find yourself questioning, wow, can I really honestly write about these things if they don't really describe me? It might be time to do some soul searching and figure out whether you actually do want to become a doctor and I'm convinced that most people will actually come to that conclusion if you're that far along in the process to the point of writing the personal statement but you need to be able to see those traits in yourself before you can really write about them in an essay and convince other people of those traits. So the final goal of this essay is to get it down to 5,300 characters, but that definitely shouldn't be the first 5,300 characters you write. So the strategy that I used for writing my personal statement involved four main steps, and those were lots of free writing, a series of rough drafts, a more final draft where you edit for grammar and sentence structure, and then sending it to other people to have them give feedback on your essay. For most people, you'll end up restarting this entire process at some point along the way because you'll, you won't be happy with the way things have gone, the direction your essay has gone, and you'll wanna just start over to make it as perfect as possible. And don't worry about that. That happens to a lot of people, and it's better to spend the time to rewrite the essay than to waste your time trying to fix one that's not as good. So the first step of this is called free writing. If you haven't heard of free writing, it's essentially where you sit down and type nonstop for 10 minutes and don't care about grammar. And for the personal statement, you want to think about, okay, I'm going to write about one of the activities or experiences in my life that have really motivated me to become a doctor. And you're gonna sit down on your computer and type for 10 minutes straight, really not letting yourself take a break and kind of get all of your thoughts on how this has affected your motivation to become a doctor. And then you'll wanna do that for each of the activities or experiences that have really influenced your desire to become a doctor. And so when you're done doing that for every activity, you will have a ton of essay already written. You will end up using that really. You'll probably wanna rewrite it when you start your rough draft, but you will have all these ideas out on a page that you can visibly look at. And it helps you to really think through what should be included in your essay and what shouldn't. So once you're done with all this free writing, the next thing you should move on to is your rough draft. And this is a really important step because you're moving from random random ideas with a lot of filler words while you couldn't think of anything as you were free writing to a more developed idea that includes everything from that free writing that you thought was important enough to include in your actual personal statement. And as you're writing this draft, you will want it to be way longer than the actual 5,300 characters, probably at least one and a half to two times as long as you think it should be in the end. And the reason for that is that even if you are taking all the important ideas, they won't all make sense together and you'll probably have to take some of them out. And also, even as you're writing this first draft, you'll still have a lot of filler words that you will realize later aren't as important and you'll need to take them out. So if you write a lot longer than it actually needs to be, then you can cut those out and still have enough information to fill the entire 5,300 characters. Characters. There are a few things you should avoid while writing this first draft of your personal statement. So one thing that you really shouldn't do is just make a list of all the activities that you have in your activities section and write a little blurb about each of them and then move on. Rather, you should take one or two or three of those experiences and really elaborate on them and focus on showing rather than telling how those experiences impacted you through like a story or through explaining more in depth what the activity was about and specific aspects of it that show how this activity relates to your desire to become a doctor now. And also in this show rather than tell category, you need to include those traits I mentioned earlier like humility and maturity and empathy. 
and you also need to incorporate some things that show you consider the downsides of medicine. So these are all things you should be thinking about as you're writing this first rough draft and realize that this first rough draft probably won't end up looking anything like your final draft of the essay. You're just trying to get all your ideas in the right order at this point and make them into a coherent essay. Then once you've written this essay, you can cut it down and take out, like I said, all of those unnecessary sentences that you found and put it down to closer to the character limit. And as I was doing this the first time, I found that while I was cutting out sentences, my essay stopped making sense. And so eventually I guess to the point where I was just like, okay, I'm gonna write another draft with my ideas in the right order so that it's more coherent. And so I completely restarted my draft, but at that point I had a lot of the sentences I was gonna use, I was just rearranging them and making them flow better. A lot of people do this multiple times just to make sure that everything's in the perfect order because really you need to spend a lot of time perfecting this essay and making it makes sense so you don't lose the reader's attention because medical school admissions committees are reading through tons of these and you need yours to stand out and get them to keep reading so they don't just skip over your essay. So as you write more and more drafts of this essay, you'll find yourself getting closer and closer to 5,300 characters because you'll be cutting out all of the unnecessary information and making every sentence count. And once you are happy with the order of your information and all the information that you've included and the length of your essay, then you can move on to the next step, which is more in-depth grammatical editing and sentence structure manipulation to make it flow extremely well. As far as grammar and spelling, it's pretty obvious if you have taken English classes, you know how to go through an essay and make sure that all of the grammar is correct and the spelling is correct. And you can even use like a website to check and make sure your grammar is exactly perfect and there's no confusion in there. And then you also want to look at sentence structure. So you don't want two sentences to start in the exact same way if they're right next to each other. You don't want to have a lot of long sentences in a row. You don't want to have a lot of short sentences in a row. What I usually do is I try into one or two long sentences followed by a short sentence or two and then go back and forth so that you keep the reader's attention so that you're not overwhelming them with long sentences or boring them with short sentences. Once you're happy with everything about your essay from grammar to sentence structure to the content to the order of the content, then you can move on to having other people review it. It's really important not to move on to this step too early because you'll get a lot of comments about grammar if you haven't already checked for grammar and then people won't be able to focus on the other things that might be you coming across as arrogant or as not really having considered what a doctor is really like. And you need to avoid those things. So as you're sending your essay to people to review, limit this to three or four people. First of all, this prevents you from overwhelming a ton of people with having to read your essay in depth. And also you will get so much feedback from those three or four people that it will be enough to carry you more than what you actually need. So after these people send back your essay with their feedback, you need to really think about which comments are useful and which comments they just made because they felt like they should make a comment. When people are reading through essays, they only comment on the negative things, typically. If you have a really good essay, they typically say overall good job at the beginning of their comments and then go into all of the things that you can change. And you can't get down on yourself for that because people are only gonna spend their time talking about the things you can fix, not about the things that are already good. And another thing to take note of is that you have already perfected this essay and you are happy with it. If someone gives you a weird comment that you don't really agree with, you don't have to fix that essay unless every one of your reviewers commented on it, then it's probably going to rub some admissions committee in the wrong way as well. But if it's just one person that is suggesting some tweak to your essay or some major change and you think that that's absurd, take that with a grain of salt and don't incorporate that in your final essay because you'll be wasting your time and you'll never get to a point where you're happy with it if you were happy with it the first time and you're now changing it. So after you're done incorporating other people's comments into your essay, and revising your essay accordingly, then you can move on to the final stages of reading through it over and over to make sure that it's as perfect as possible. And after you've read through your essay as many times as possible and not noticed anything wrong with it, then you are ready to submit. And then you are done with this process and that is the most important essay you will write in this process so, you're, so it's over. And I think you should celebrate that moment where you are ready to submit your primary application because you're done with the essay. So I hope this video has been helpful and that it gives you an idea of one strategy you can use to write your personal statement. I know there are a lot of strategies out there but this is the one I used last summer and if you're really trying to get to an essay where you're as happy with it as possible and it's as perfect as possible then it's worth spending all of this time on all of these steps.